Hello and welcome to D-Town TV, the free show for digital SLR shooters. I'm Larry Becker, he's RC, and this is the season finale. So we've got really great, we actually have a special guest over here yes. at the uh, special guest table that we're going to be giving away. That's so, right. I mean, you can see that. It just sits there. Look at it. Yeah. And you guys aren't here for the content. You guys are here for the printer. Let's get, <laughs> <laughs> Let's just face the facts. You're here for the printer. Uh, actually, this episode is airing the day before the pre-con start at nice. DC at Photoshop World. So if you're there, make sure you look up RC or me and say hi. Tell us you watch uh, D-Town. Say that you really like it and tell us how great it is and stuff like that. <laughs> right, so. but if, you, if you're not aware, March, March 24th through the 26th, right. go to photoshopworld.com. If you're in the Washington, D.C. area, you can go there, and right. there are tons of classes that are on the expo floor that are for free. Right. You they, can go and get a free pass if you're in the Washington, D.C. area, free pass, go inside the expo floor, and you can watch classes from everybody. We have two theaters there with right. a ton of stuff. So I know that a lot of times people are like, oh, well, it's very expensive. And I'm like, if you're anywhere near the D.C. area, you can take advantage of being at Photoshop World for nothing. Now that's not the just full. It's not the full set of classes. It's right. not like the because we have a lot of really big classes, and this is what people pay right. when they when they pay a fee to uh, go to Photoshop World. They're paying to go to these uh, large classes that have you know 500,000 people in the class. This isn't that, but it's the expo floor, mm -hmm. and and like RC was pointing out, very much unlike. Most trade shows, there's really good training, structured training on the trade show floor. So that's what you can get a free pass If you're to. anywhere cool. near it, just go. Just go, and I, will, I guarantee you that you're going to get something out of it. Yeah. Now, that's the Photoshop World website. That's what it actually looks like when you're out there. It, it, the expo is just phenomenal. It's, it's one of my favorite places to be. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> Let me share something with you inside of Lightroom that's a uh, camera raw process. When you work inside of Lightroom, when you take DNGs and you put DNGs, and I encourage everybody to make DNGs. Take DNG files. When you have your raw files, convert them to DNG. It's a lot better for you to have DNGs in your computer, I think. And now, clarify just real quick, a DNG is the digital negative. The digital from negative from that you have inside of your raw file. So basically, and I'll show you guys during a break, but basically a digital negative is just a different version of a file. It takes your raw file, turns it into this digital negative. Now, when you do this and when you ingest all of this stuff inside of Lightroom, mm -hmm. Lightroom says, oh, this is a raw file. Let me figure out how to be able to do this, how to prepare it. So they prepare it and the computer figures out the best way to do that. <coughs> That's one version. Right. So 2010 had a specific version. Mm -hmm. In the year 2010, they figured out this was the best way to process a raw file. As they move further and further, they learn a little bit more, sure. and they figure out new ways to process this file. So that's called a process version that you see inside of Photoshop, and you see inside in Camera Raw, you see inside of Lightroom. When you ingest all of the stuff inside of your computer, you're going to notice that the processing is using 2012. Now, if you come over here to the Develop module inside of Lightroom, you're going to go all the way down here under camera calibration. See the process right here? Process right here says 2012, current. Your stuff is probably set to 2010. When it's set to 2010, you're going to see this exclamation point. Mm -hmm. That's going to tell you, hey, we figured out a new way for you to be able to do this. It may change or alter how you see your image. You click on that, and then that can automatically update your 2012 to your 2010 version. Or it'll take your 2010 version, and it'll go, all right, go ahead and update it. It moves it over to 2012 and you're good right. to go. So it's just optimized post-processing for those digital negative files. Right, but here's another thing. If you go over here to the basics panel, oh, actually here, let me do this, even better. Let's set myself up to 2010. Now I have the image, it's set to 2010. I go to my basic panel. If you see exposure, recovery, fill light, blacks, brightness, and contrast, and you're saying to yourself, I'm using Lightroom 4, mm -hmm. I don't understand why I don't see the new sliders that everybody's talking about. Right. That's because you have not updated this picture to the 2012 version. The moment that you take this and you move this from 2010 to 2012, that warning goes away, and now you have a new set of sliders. Very cool. So it's important for you to do that. If you see the exclamation point, it's telling you to do something. You want to take advantage of all of the stuff that you have that's new inside of Lightroom 4, you need to update that stuff. 
Good tip, RC. You know, that was that was actually one of the things that I was looking for, is why do some of my images have the old thing? And, and uh, of course, I, I figured it out just before. <laughs> and, the, and, and the reason that they do that is because they don't necessarily, Lightroom didn't want to come and grab your catalog. You have a whole bunch of pictures, right? Right. And you don't want to necessarily take those pictures and have them automatically, automatically yeah. update, and then all of a sudden you see it, and then all of a sudden you're like, I don't know what happened. All the changes that I thought were really, really nice aren't really nice. So there you go, easy enough for you. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, uh, we have an interview. Yeah, with Zach. That's right. Yeah, we'll so. be right back. This is gonna be good. Hey guys, Tom Bo here. We're at Copper Mountain in Colorado. We're working on a new class on adventure sports. Um, we're going to look at a lot of different things in this class. Everything from high speed sync fill flash to working in portraits in a ski area environment. We'll look at gear concerns, what kind of pack to carry, how do you work on and off a lift. There's a lot of logistics that go into shooting skiing. We'll talk about getting that classic powder shot. We're also going to do one of the most classic things for ski photography, and that's seaming together a whole sequence of moves, it's absolutely fantastic. It's gonna be wild, should be a great class. Hi, my name's Dave Black. We're working with sports action using speed lights. We started out track and field with a sprinter coming out of the starting blocks. Then we got some great feature shots of baseball from a variety of angles. Had beautiful twilight sky behind him, and then we'd like re-illuminate him with a speed light setup. We moved on to faster action with motocross, where we had three great professional motocross riders for us on a super course. We used a combination of cross light with the sunshine and then the speed lights coming in to make a real dynamic look. It's exciting. You'll learn a lot. So come to KelbyTraining.com and watch my sports action with Speedlights video. We'll see you there. Welcome back everybody to D-Town TV with my buddy RC and me, I'm Larry. And uh, the guy you're about to see in just a moment is Zach Arias. But first, we gotta tell you how come we're here. We're here because of Kelby Training. KelbyTraining.com, the place to go to learn all this stuff in detail, nothing left out, and you learn from the absolute best in the industry. Yeah, it's at any point in time, you can get classes from Maisel, you can get classes from McNally, you can get classes from Scott Kelby, and all of this stuff is broken down, immediately available to you, whenever you want it. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Make sure you take a look at it, KelbyTraining.com. My favorite way to do it is on the iPad. Is it? Sitting on my back porch, just chilling, having a nice Diet Coke in the evening, and uh, watching classes. It's and, and you know what, a lot of the times people are like, oh, well, do you guys watch classes? Like, like, what do you do to keep up? And I'm like, I go to Kelby Training. Yeah, we watch I our, work here. We watch classes. Yeah. I work here, like I was cleaning the garage, and I'm going through Kelby Training. I'm cleaning all the stuff in my garage. I have a class going in the background. Why not? Yeah, Dude, absolutely. It's there. it's there. But anyway, take a look at this interview with Mrs. Zach Arias. Hey, everybody, RC, I'm Zach. Part two. I wanted to get back to you on something, because you were talking a little bit about character. Mm -hmm. You are talking about shooting character, characters being important right. in your picture. And I think that sometimes, that made me think about uh, people like Ferrano's photo. Yeah, Jared Poland. Jared Poland, right? Great guy, when you think about it. And, and, and the first thing that, uh, there's, there's an inherent difference between characters and personalities. Right. I think Fro is a personality. And I think that, that there is something to be said about an individual who kind of pours a lot of who they are into their body of work. Right. And I think that at the end of the day, once they start finding clients, they find clients because they're able to do that. They're, right. they're not faking it. Right. You know, like, like going back to the fashion thing. Okay. The best fashion photographers in the world, they pour into them because they're, they, that's what they love. Like I love music, I can't play a lick, but I love music and it's no wonder that I ended up shooting tons and tons of bands. Mm -hmm. You know, um, people who love children make the best children photographers, mm -hmm. you know. But, you know, let's say, let's take Fro, uh, Jared, and, you know, he's, he's this, like, personality that could almost be a character. Mm -hmm. But the camera turns off and he's the same person. Mm -hmm. And what happened to me in my life when I lost my career, uh, my identity was... Uh, 
the camera. I was a photographer. I was always this wall flower that, but w that camera allowed me access into people's lives and places that never allowed me. And, and when it got taken away, I, Zach was gone. Mm -hmm. And I had to learn to be Zach. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm Zach with the camera again, but if you take the camera away, you don't take me away. Right, and I think that, and, and if there's a tip in there, the tip, it, it, made, it made me think about Fro, and it made me think about all of these kinds of things, because it made me think that if you want to become a better photographer, and you want to be a really, really good photographer, what you need to do is you need to start finding out who you are, the things that yeah. you like, the things that you get into, and then push all of that stuff in through into your photography. That. Forget about all the other stuff. Just focus, drill down. You know, if you like music, try shooting music. If you like kids, try shooting kids. Right. Those kinds of things. And at the end of the day, you want to strive to be able to be a personality behind the camera, not necessarily a character. Character is what you're going to shoot. Right. Personality is who you want to be. Right. But don't become like ego photographer. No. Because we all hate them. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. we aren't curing cancer with a camera. No. No, we're just taking pictures. The job that cures cancer? Is the job that cures cancer. No more, no less. Yep. Cool. Thank you, RC. Hey, man, thank you. Hey Welcome. guys, we are back, <laughs> and uh, that was that was actually it's always such a cool thing when Zach comes in. I really enjoyed his one light stuff. That's when I started mm -hmm. following him, and then also he's got a thing on his uh, on his blog about shooting on white seamless. He's Very probably the most inspirational person that I've ever met on that kind of stuff. So I think it's great. Now uh, you have a tip on steel wool. I do, and in fact, you know, you see these images around every once in a while. Let me let me give you a little bit of the setup before I show you the actual image. What you want to do? This is like any kind of uh, a night shooting where you're setting your camera up on a tripod. It's going to be a timed exposure. And uh, earlier in this season when I talked about light painting with the, that really bright LED flashlight, those were like 20 second exposures. This stuff that I'm about to show you, it turns out best if it's like a four or five second exposure because the shower of sparks only lasts for a, a much more brief period of time. So here's the setup. On the camera, uh, I have my camera set for somewhere between f8 and f11. I think on this one I, I had it set on f11. And then um, I, I set up my exposure, or rather my uh, focus in advance, and then I turned it off. So uh, I set it up with uh, automatic exposure using my flashlight. My son was standing out in the middle of my backyard. And in fact, when I shot this, I made him stop playing basketball. He was playing basketball with his friends. I made him stop playing basketball, come over and light a piece of steel wool on fire and spin it around. Now, here's the way that it works. What you do is you take steel wool and you kind of loosen it up and then wrap it around a piece of steel wire. And that piece of steel wire needs to be two or three feet long. So something like this. And then the piece of steel wool is down here. You light it with a lighter and you just have a few seconds and you spin that in front of you and with the timed exposure of about four seconds uh, the I pre-focused before all this started and then as he's spinning it around the sparks of the steel wool are just just spraying so let's have a look and see what this actually looks like I've seen these around on the on the web and it's actually a very cool effect and if you put the person back there, of course he was playing basketball, but if you put the person back there in an all black outfit, it's even more dramatic. You can have them spin the circle and, and like just around their face area. Uh, but the shower of sparks looks much more dramatic in the finished timed exposure like this than in real life. Because in real life, it was just a, a little bit of sparks that uh, you only saw for just a few seconds and then it was gone. And then I showed the guys uh, that were all playing basketball, I showed them what it looked like when I captured the the uh, timed exposure and they're like, wow, it caught every single spark because it's not quite that dramatic looking. But when you capture it as a timed exposure, it works really well. So make sure you set up everything on manual and get your focus in advance, set it up on a tripod, about four seconds, and uh, have some water nearby <laughs> in case that piece of flaming steel wool flies off the wire and goes somewhere that you can uh, you can put it out. But uh, like your eye? No, <laughs> my eye. <laughs> it was it was actually not nearly as dangerous as it looks. But uh, it does look pretty dangerous. I was gonna be like, dude, he's bare chested on there. Now, like, you know, oh. it's it's far less dramatic. Okay. All right, all right. That. But it, but it comes up with a, a cool finished look. Nice. Very cool. Thanks, Larry. Now, hey, take a look at this. I'm at the uh, Google Plus page. I'm watching the comments. You guys are doing this stuff on air. Somebody had asked about DNGs. Is it a good idea for you to go into DNG or not? 
it always is a good idea for you to go to the DNG file. You can always highlight an image that you have inside of Lightroom and under the library setup, you can go ahead and just convert these to DNG. Now, I don't know if I have a file that's a raw file that's not connected to my camera, but inside of here, if I were to go into these files, see, they're missing because I have my, um, I plug everything into an external drive, but you could technically go in here and you can convert these into DNGs automatically. Mm -hmm. So see here, update pre DNG previews, you can do any kind of conversion from Lightroom. I'll go ahead and I'll post a video for you to do that. But the thing that you want to keep in mind when you're working with this is that DNG files are raw files. It's just Adobe's way of figuring sure. out how to keep that information. The, one of the other questions that came in was, you know, I embed the raw file inside of the DNG. And I'm like, so you're taking the raw file and embedding it inside of raw, raw files. Files. <laughs> I'm like, that's, it's overkill. It's way overkill. You're overthinking the entire thing. But here, this is the best example, and I've, I do this countless of times. So this is what I tell people. These are two raw files. So imagine if all of a sudden this is a DNG file, mm -hmm. right, coming out of your camera. It, don't worry about the fact that this is, um, it's a ball and it's messed up. But think about it, that's one size, right? So this is one size of a DNG file. This is what your camera spit out as raw images. All Adobe did was take the same raw information and just figure out a smarter way to be able to put it together. Now, imagine if I had to put this inside of a paper bag. If I had to put these things in shopping bags, how many of these do you think you can fit inside of a shopping bag? All right? 50, 100. You can probably fit a lot more of these. Good point. Than these. This is a little bit more intelligently packaged. Mm -hmm. That's one reason, space savings, about a 20% space savings. The second thing that you wanna keep in mind when you're working with DNGs inside of Lightroom 4 is that Lightroom 4 now does a multi-core reading. Okay. So basically what happens is the DNG file, your computer, when you look at your computer, here's, take a look at my task monitor here. If you were to take a look at my uh, let's see, my CPU, you'll notice that my CPU has a specific amount of cores. Those cores will, they're the multi-core processors. So you have a Core i7, Core i5, so mm -hmm. there's you know five cores, six cores, eight cores. Before, what would happen with Lightroom is one core would process all of the information. Okay. Now you can have multiple cores taking portions of the information and reading the information, which makes it a lot easier. But only with DNGs? With DNG files. Very cool. So there's fast load previews in right. there, so you have, a, you have a much better quality of a preview inside of the file. There's tons of reasons for you to do that. We've covered those in other detail episodes. Make sure that you consider DNG as an option. So that alone, the speed alone is, a, is another Speed and savings reason. is, alone, is, is sure. reason enough, and the fact that it embeds everything. You don't have a sidecar file. Right. You have a Raw file and an XMP file, not with a DNG. Puts all of this stuff Everything together inside of one file. Yeah. Lots of reasons. Anyway, I'll take a quick break. When you come back, we have a website for you to take a look at and the giveaway of the Epson printer. Hi, everybody. I'm David Zeiser. Hey, we have one great Kelby training video coming your way, and this time it's going to be on couples. What I'm trying to bring to this video is find the great locations to get some great photographs of your couples, how you can put great lighting on your couples, and then also how you can get great expressions. I can guarantee that you're going to love it. Join me on this Kelby training video, Shooting Couples. Composition. What is it? Does this work? What about this? Leading lines, rule of odds, the rule of thirds. Viewpoint, patterns, contrast, balance. Dead center is deadly. I'm Rick Salmon. I really hope you can join me for my latest class on Kelby training, composition, the strongest way of seeing. I'll show you how to compose technically as well as emotionally. Welcome back to the episode of D-Town TV, the free show for DSLR shooters. My name is RC, and I'm here with Mr. Larry Becker. Larry, you have the website. I do, and uh, this is actually a very cool one. This image that you're looking at right now is from Regina Pagels, or Pagless. I'm sorry, Regina. Uh, I can't pronounce your name, but I can tell you, great work. This actually is from her NAP member portfolio, and we've really improved the NAP member portfolios. They, they look like uh, 500PX stuff, but her 
images are just gorgeous. She gets all kinds of raves about it. And this one was Image of the Week on the NAP Members website recently. What's so cool about her work is that uh, she does this great compositing and she actually attended Joel Grimes um, seminar. Uh -huh. And so after going to that, she starts talking about how she was trying to simulate or emulate some of that stuff. But I've seen her stuff before she went to that seminar and she's quite good and has been for a while. Quite good at, at this kind of work. This super realistic and, and great compositing. She's won Image of the Week recognition more than once and just has this great look to it. So make sure that you check out that, uh, that link there on the bottom of the screen. Yep. and make sure you visit her site. Great stuff, great photographer, and amazing post-processing, beautiful, beautiful compositing. Good great stuff. Job. Now, we have a whole bunch of stuff for you guys to win for the season finale. Mr. Becker, yeah. hold on to this. Okay. That's one winner. Th that, by itself, great stuff. A three DVD set, originally priced at $199.95. I think it sells for a little less than that right now. But it's Scott Kelby's three-disc set, Light It, Shoot It, Retouch It. And that's going to a winner here on our season finale show. The best thing for you to do is just go to kelbytv.com forward slash dtown tv. Find the season finale episode. Leave a comment on this. Mm -hmm. Tell us what you want to see next season. Do you want to see more cheap shots? Do you want to see more grip tips? Do you want to see more Matt? Do you want to see more Scott? Of course you want to see more of those guys. <laughs> But leave us a tip. Tell us what you want to do. Another person is going to win these. This is really sweet for speed lights of any flavor. Very nice uh, speed light grid set from the folks at Rogue. And then the companion set of gels that goes with it. Fits right inside. That's so going to be somebody, a second winner. Somebody's going to win that. A third winner. Very nice. This was actually donated by a friend of mine, Larry Becker. Uh, this is a, a really sweet setup from the folks at Spider Camera Holster. This thing, if you've been to my blog right after WPPI, I pointed them out at WPPI, you can put a pretty serious heavy duty camera right on this belt structure and it holds your camera really sturdy. And uh, I wouldn't worry about putting just about any DSLR full rig. I absolutely awesome. love it. What, you don't, what you don't see on this is that you can't, the, my first, my biggest thing that I was freaked out about was that if I tipped, the camera could come out of place or somebody would accidentally yeah, pull it off. Kinda, it's kind of on can't this picture right here. You can't. You have to literally turn the camera up in order for you to get it out. It's actually but really... It, but it is an easy release. It's, it's an easy release. Easy. You lift it, you pull. It, it really is phenomenally well built. I love this thing. Yeah, I think very it's, cool I think stuff. it's great. So the last thing that we have is that. The Epson Stylus Photo R2880 printer. We'll just take it like that. We'll wrap it up and we'll give it over to you guys. Make sure that you leave that. Thank you so much it's for the Spider Holster, season. for Rogue, for Kelby Training, and for Epson for the donation of all of these prizes. It has been a good season. Yeah. It has been a very, very good season. And it's going to be even better next season. So on behalf of myself, RC. I'm Larry Becker. Guys, it's been a blast this year. So take care. We'll see you.